There's no disputing it. There may come a day when the only clothing basics you'll ever buy will come from a Japanese mega company you've never heard called Fast Retailing. That company owns, among many others, the Japanese mega department store, Uniqlo. And if Uniqlo ever gets a firm grip on the West the way it has on Japan, it may be the only department store you'll ever need. But what are its origins and why is it so important? Well, I'm your boy Reggie Casual, and today we take a deep look at Japan's biggest fashion retailer and ask the question, what the hell is Uniqlo? Uniqlo's humble origins begin in 1984 when a then young fresh graduate of Waseda University in Tadashi Yannai took to working with his father's tailoring company and opened his first Uniqlo store in Hiroshima. But the name Uniqlo actually came by accident. Originally a contraction of the name Unique Clothing Warehouse, the original registration was actually Uniqlo with a C instead of a Q, but correspondence with Hong Kong business registration misread the C for a Q, consequently changing it to the name we all know today. After the mishap, Yanai took a liking to the name and changed it across all Japan in 1988. And in 1991, Yanai then changed his father's parent company, Oguri Shoji, to fast retailing. And by 1994, Uniqlo was operating over 100 stores in Japan. And then 1997 hit and Uniqlo would become unstoppable. After adopting the private label strategy made famous by The Gap, Uniqlo started producing and providing their own clothes, and then they went all Japanese with it. Per normal business practices at the time in Japan, they began outsourcing production to China, but the care they took into the quality control of their clothing was a huge part of Uniqlo's success. And because it was offered as a high quality cheap alternative during the economic recession of the late 90s in Japan, Uniqlo became incredibly popular. And by 2001, Uniqlo had over 500 stores in the homeland. But what about the clothes? Because this is what it's all about. Well, Uniqlo operates within two Japanese concepts of shun and kinobi. Shun, which roughly translates to best timing, is basically Uniqlo looking at trends and quickly deciding which trends are most likely to become staples and or basics and then providing them in a timely manner, neither too soon nor too late. The philosophy of kinobi, however, is a bit less esoteric as it translates to function and beauty, which is a philosophy that is pretty much the standard in Japan, period. It basically means that for example, when you enter a store, say a Uniqlo, everything is organized in such a way that is beautiful, easily discoverable, or as Nobuo Damai, CEO of Fast Retailing USA would put it, the clothing is presented in an organized, rational manner, and that very organization and rationality creates an artistic pattern and rhythm. All these qualities reflect the defining characteristics of modern Japanese culture, modern Japanese-ness. And that, is just about the biggest understatement of all time. Walk into any Uniqlo store and the organization is what sets it apart from every other retailer. It basically has become the global standard in defining the perfect department shopping experience. This is all culminated into Uniqlo's company mantra of life wear, which basically means they wanna make clothes for the everyday. They don't indulge in obscure trends or make cheap alternatives for styles that are eccentric or flash in the pan, much like other stores in this category. However, that doesn't keep them from collaborating with heavy hitters in the industry to bolster their position. Key partnerships and collaborations with designers like Jun Takahashi of Undercover, Pharrell Williams, Basquiat, Keith Haring, Cause, Jill Sanders, and more have catapulted Uniqlo to the forefront of the discussion of best department retailer and collaborations with brands like Disney, Hello Kitty, Toy Animation, and Nintendo have showcased Uniqlo's inclusive strategy, which is rare for a Japanese company of its magnitude. And yet it still continues to aim higher, opening up its UT shop, a t-shirt shop within the department store aimed at a younger pop culture motivated market and handing the creative design reins over to Japanese streetwear second godfather, number two himself, Nigo, the former owner of Bape. 
The last few years have opened up Uniqlo to the possibilities of athletic wear with Uniqlo Sport. And in Japan, kimono, yukata, and most recently, maternity clothing is being offered. Uniqlo has spearheaded heat tech, comfortable insulated spandex, airism, breathable fabric that wicks away sweat, and pretty much everything else under the sun that has to do with clothing. And yet, it still continues. Uniqlo is now creeping its way westward, and as of February 2017, it boasts over 1,700 stores worldwide with key locations in France, Canada, and most recently, the United States. After opening its New York Soho store in 2006, the company now has over 45 locations in the contiguous United States as it continues its aggressive expansion and goal of recording 10 billion annually in the States alone. And if any company can do it, Uniqlo can. It's just easier to shop at and the quality is second to none between other department stores in the same class. Here they are making basics, killing it, and unlike other stores in the same category, it's not experiencing any immediate slowdown. And that should have every other executive sweating at the neck. So that's a bit on Uniqlo, but obviously the story isn't over. In no time, a Uniqlo could be popping up in a city near you. Hell, there's ones in Japan popping up in train stations. So there's that. But tell us what you think about Uniqlo. Have you ever shopped there? What was the experience like? Let us know in the comments. Give a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video and want to see more like it. And follow up on Instagram for the visuals and on Twitter for the info. Also, help us build the ultimate shop for Japanese street fashion by supporting us on Patreon. But most importantly, keep it locked right here for all of your info on international street fashion and culture from Tokyo. It's your boy, Yoroshiko Nagashimasu, and I'm out.